Welcome to Wild on Health. Recently, we did a show about food and how it affects your mood. There is an irrefutable link. But how do we effectively control it? Well, to start, we need to understand emotional eating and the behaviors that cause it. Joining us today is Dr. Joey Shulman, renowned author on the topic of diet, nutrition, and weight loss. She is CEO of the very successful Shulman Weight Loss Clinic. Also here with us tonight is Jamie Long Lua, registered holistic nutritionist who takes a special interest in weight loss, first line therapy, and achieving optimal health through diet and nutrition. Thanks so much for joining us again, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So listen, what's up in late and great in the uh, Joy Shulman Weight Loss Center? Oh, we are doing really fun things. Our unique approach to weight loss is having enormous success. We're doing things like behavioral shifts with emotional eating, yeah. hormonal balance, quality calories, the whole gamut. Because this is it where together. it's at. I mean, it used to be all about, you know, get you know, fit, train hard, and, and lose weight and, 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 and go on a specific diet. But now the focus is largely on you know, hormonal imbalance, emotional eating, how to control those cravings is a topic of today's show. Yep. How is it working uh, there at the center? I think the great part of the center is that it's individualized. So, yeah. so each person that comes in, we look at their case and we give them a plan for them, right? It's not a, yeah. it's not a cookie cutter weight loss, and I think that's what works. And we recognized how good you were at the Vaughn Medical Center. So not too long ago, about a year, just over a year now, uh, we snaggled you uh, over, and now you're there as well. Uh, you know, some days a yeah. week too, right? Yeah, it's awesome. I get good. To work with the individualized you. approach is really where it's at. So, yeah. you know, let's show a YouTube video. You know, on Wild on Health, we like to do this sort of anatomy 101, but this is actually not an animation we're gonna throw up here you guys can speak to what's going on an actual view through the stomach of a female who's ingested food what's happening here what are we looking at well this I mean this is amazing actual footage of digestion and we see that digestion actually starts with a thought when you smell fresh baked bread you secrete amylase that's food dropping into the stomach there you can see and the stomach needs nerves to make that into what's called chyme that's liquid food that you're gonna be absorbed in the small intestine and so the, now this is the food coming into the small intestine and immediately um, there's bile release, that's what you see squirting right there, and pancreatic enzymes to help break down that food into the smallest parts and then it's absorbed through the small intestine. Um, and, and that's when sugars and proteins and fats... And, and we're seeing this literally time. move through the system. Uh, this is, uh, that's veli. Talk to us about veli, Joey. I mean, what's, uh, what are we looking okay, at? Okay, so here? we have these thousands, millions of projections called villi in the small intestine. And the villi's main role is to absorb nutrient function. They are coated, you can see a mucosal level there, but they're taking your sandwich and making your sandwich into food for the body from carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Yeah. And that's the whole role. And the, vi the villi, the small intestine, if you spread it out, they say the surface area is that of a football field. Yep. That's how many villi we have in the small intestine. So that's so. what's happening. That's the physical dynamics of what's happening. But you mentioned right. the key point here is that it starts with a thought, you know, take us, take us from there because you know you talk about it in your upcoming book. You talk about uh, are you an emotional eater? That's the focus, large focus of the book. And you've got this this checklist. Right? It is. I have this checklist. I'm one of those people who thinks we're all an emotional eater to a certain degree. Happy, bored, sad, lonely, stressed. We eat. Part of that is thought, part of that is behavior, part of that is biochemistry. We're stressed, we secrete cortisol, we're sleep deprived, we don't have enough hormones that make us feel full. We're going to talk about leptin, I believe. Yep. So once you identify the emotional eating patterns, you really go, okay, here are my triggers, here's where I need to shift. And that's why we're not interested in you making a temporary change. Anybody, to, to, in reality, can get you to lose weight. Yep. The key is to get you to keep it off. That's the key. Excellent. So let's start with the healthy start to the day yes. and the poor finish. Why is right. this something that people are doing wrong? Because people wake up and everybody says, Joey, I start great. I have yogurt. I have granola. Terrific. But then they hit that 3 p.m. dreaded slump where they're stressed at work and they feel tired. And, you know, you don't crave an egg. You don't crave a piece of celery. They're going and they're getting a muffin and a coffee or a sugar, something to bring up blood sugar levels. Well, from then on, it's downward spiral. They get stressed. They get home. They haven't prepared for dinner. And they start eating. And they start food binging. And then when they put the kids to sleep at night or they have a deadline due, nighttime eating is emotional eater. If you've yeah. had a proper dinner, you're not hungry. You're craving. And that's okay. But in order for us to shift you, you need to break those cravings. Okay, so that's a good start today and poor finish. Joey, th that's excellent information. So, Jamie, tell us a little bit about what people are maybe doing wrong in the beginning of the day. Poor breakfast choices and why. Right, so some people think that maybe they're making a good choice when they go for, like, the low-fat muffin or cereal, high-carbohydrate cereals. And basically that sets the stage for poor blood sugar regulation. So they might think they're making the right choice, but then it just sets their hormones off balance for the rest of the day. So we teach people 
people, okay, what do you eat in the morning to, to create a great blood sugar balance for the rest of the day? Yes. So you decrease those cravings. So sometimes you're actually not an emotional eater. You're just biochemically off, right? It's Absolutely. your hormones. Yes. Absolutely. And so what do we tell people that are, you know, constantly preoccupied by food? You know, whether they're an emotional eater or not is somehow based on what their pre-thoughts are at all times, right? I mean, yes. What do we I mean, we have a slogan at Sean Weight Loss, lose the weight and live your life. Because if you're thinking about your food, if your weight is bothering you more than a 7 out of 10, I was telling Jamie that we have a client who said, I'm always tired at 3 o'clock. You can't fix this. One week, I said. One week we'll fix this. Not because we're magic, because we're putting into blood sugar control. And that's the first step to end emotional eating. We have to break the craving. You cannot fight out a craving. You will lose. You have to balance it. Absolutely. Jamie, are we an emo emotional eater if we're eating late night in front of the TV uh, alone? I mean, is that a... Is that a a keynote? 100%, especially if you've had a balanced dinner. You're, most people are not hungry at 8 or 9 p.m. sitting in front of the TV. They're just eating because it's there. So right. no one's keeping them accountable. So here they are and they're snacking late night. No one's around to watch. What advice would you give them? I mean, they've had dinner maybe three or four hours ago. Maybe they've done some work. Now they're actually in front of the TV. No one's looking. What would you tell them? So get the junk out of the house because if it's there, if you're it's not there, it. you can't eat it, exactly, right? That's good exactly. Advice. And we also have some great treats here in the evening. If you are hungry, go for the red bell peppers, go for the almonds, the things that aren't going to the cherry tomatoes, trigger, and cherry and tomatoes. tomatoes. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the stuff you guys have here out on the table because these are the alternative snacks that they can guilt-free grab in front of the TV. I mean, how much? Let's get specific about this. We have free foods at Shulman Weight Loss. So we're, they're free foods. I'm not saying don't eat it all at night, but if you're grabbing granola bars, I mean, take home point. Fats and proteins don't make you fat. Sugars, carbs, stress, lack of sleep make you fat. So after dinner, if you're hungry, you can have, as Jamie was saying, red peppers. We have chocolate tea here. You can have air pop popcorn. You can have a few wasabi peas. Pick up a pomegranate, and I know it sounds funny, pomegranates take a long time to eat. So just, you're going to be busy with food behaviors and eating them, so you can have a pomegranate. Even have a quarter of an avocado. We have something called Greens Plus Kids here. We, get, we have a recipe where people make it into popsicles, and if you're hungry at night, grab a popsicle. Great idea. Yeah. I love the idea, too, of curbing the chocolate craving, if you've had your, if you've had your fill or you know, you're, you're beyond what you should be intaking, and putting maybe two or three chocolate chips into uh, mm. a tea. And, yeah. and, and the palate is sort of satisfied and, and you know some of that craving goes away. Have you yeah. experienced that? In, uh... Yeah, and some of these teas, like this one, is very sweet on its own, right? right? So you can really cure the craving. I always say to people, make a ritual out of having a tea in the evening and set, like, so make a new ritual. Maybe yes. just break your pattern in the evening instead of sitting down in front of the TV. Why not play a game with your family? Create a new pattern so you, you create new behaviors, right? Yeah, absolutely. Dietary intake determines mood. Is that another sign of an emotional eater when your dietary intake, what you're eating, determines how you're feeling? Sorry, so like when you're eating a food and you know you're feeling a certain way, is that is that a classic uh, you know oh, individual sure. who's experiencing uh, an emotional eating syndrome if you will? For sure. Okay, for so, sure. so those people should be calling us tonight <laughs> as well. Food guilt after overeating? Oh my gosh, food. Who hasn't had food guilt? Who hasn't right. had the food hangover? So we have people who come in and they've binged eat or they've eaten at night and they feel guilty and they're pa well, don't worry about the guilt. But if your food and the way you're feeling is determining your mood, if you're thinking about your weight more than once or twice a day, it's preoccupying too much of your energy. Yep. And you can change that. It doesn't matter to me if you have 10 pounds to lose or 100 pounds to lose. You can change it. In fact, in the 12 steps, and this is just something I'm reminded by the Alcoholics Anonymous group, is that when you're preoccupied by anything, mm -hmm. that is a sign of an addictive behavior. And food and addictions actually go hand in hand now, right? Maybe we'll talk about dopamine if we get a chance, along with all the other hormones in the next pack here. Insulin. Leptin, ghrelin, resistin, and adiponectin are all hormones that affect your ability to gain or lose weight. And when we come back, how they work and how you can control your food cravings. Stay right there. Well, leptin makes you feel full. Ghrelin makes you feel hungry. Resistin's role is quite debated still, and adiponectin comes from your fat. Achieving a balanced blood sugar and insulin level is key when trying to regain control of your faulty food patterns. And here to explain this more are two experts in the field of diet, nutrition, and successful weight loss, Dr. Joey Shulman and Jamie Longlois. So, you know, science is advancing. We're learning it's a lot more than just the typical diet and exercise. There's all these hormones. Let's start with insulin. 
Let's get this sort of straight for people. What's your take on insulin, how it's important for weight loss? Right, so insulin is a hormone secreted by your pancreas. That's role is to tell the, the, all your cells that you have sugar ready for it. Basically, the end product is your cells need sugar for energy. We need sugar. It's we need gotta sugar. be there, right? Yes. So it's not to say that you know we, we shouldn't be consuming at all, and especially in the form of the complex carbohydrates we see. But so let's say when insulin says, okay, sugar's there, what happens next? So then sugar goes into the cell and, and it makes energy, and that's how you have energy. But the problem is, is when you're eating refined carbohydrates and sugars and insulin levels go up too high, you overburden the system. And the system and then and then you start to store fat so too much insulin you store fat so we need to balance out insulin levels and, and we've yeah. got a couple of graphs from the Shulman weight loss clinic we'll throw these up and as you're describing you know your two cents on this Joey yes just you know, walk us through this as it relates to uh, to balance here well what we're gonna see is a chart and you can see the above chart is insulin fluctuations blood sugar fluctuations up and down this is the typical person walking in with a 3 p.m. slump binge eating what they feel is emotional eating and all we want to do is put you into ideal blood sugar. You can see below, you're still having ups and downs, but they're very, they're smaller waves. And what I say to my clientele is, your cell has doors on your cell, and insulin opens up the doors to let the blood sugar go in. Well, once you become insensitive to your insulin, the key to the door doesn't work as effectively. That's the top graph where you're going up and down and up and down. So your body goes, oh, okay, I get it. I'll secrete more insulin. Your cells don't feel it. The key is not working in the lock as well, and we need to make that key work in the lock and open up the doors effectively. And you can do that, luckily, we know, through diet, through exercise, even through stress management, if you will. I mean, prayer, meditation, working, you know, belly breathing. So there's, as you say, I mean, it's so important. There's a hormonal element. There is a nervous system element. Um, it's not just about digestion. Digestion is linked to all of these components that make for a permanent shift for successful weight loss. Excellent. So now that we've learned all about the anatomy, what happens when food gets into the stomach, we've gone over some of these you know, hormones in, in bare bones basics. What exactly, to recap for our, our listeners and viewers, Jamie, is a, uh, a craving? What exactly really happens when you have this craving? So typically it's when blood sugar goes low and then you need that sugar to bring, to bring blood sugar up and that's what happens. You just go up, down, up, down. Um, and typically when we get people into more balanced blood sugar, the first thing that they come in and they say is, I'm not having that 3 p.m. slump. I'm, my energy went from a 2 to a 10. You know, like you really start to notice that you have more balanced energy throughout the day. And that's what you know for saying at the Shulman Weight Loss Clinic too is that it's not, you know, a weakness. We gotta like let yeah. everyone know that we're on their side. It's it often now it's more described as a biochemical imbalance. It is. I mean I was telling Jamie, I, I have an eighteen month old at home who was colicky. I was sleep deprived, I was not eating well, I was not working out. My cravings were out of control. And it was actually a beautiful gift to me to go Oh, and you, I couldn't fight it out. I had to balance myself. You needed to back away. I needed to eat everything I could that was sugary sweet to soothe, to, to bring myself down. And once you got into hormonal balance, you broke it. You go, oh, okay, back, I'm back. Very cool. Yeah. Now we're talking about leptin, adiponectin, ghrelin, secretin, all these different hormones we're learning more about in the simplest of terms. You know, what are we talking about here? And, and perhaps how do supplements help us out? So, so all of those hormones are affected by, by um, your belly fat. So they're all leptin, um, it, it sort of tells your body when you're full um, and is affected by belly fat. Uh, ghrelin tells your body when, when, uh, you're, you're hungry. when you're hungry. And so supplements can really help um, balance out all these hormones. Give us one, your favorite. So my favorite um, would be fish oil. Definitely okay. I would say fish oil. Fish oil balances uh, your mood, mm -hmm. so it helps decrease cravings. Okay, but this and is an helps. oil. This is an oil. So this explain for oil. people, because they're thinking, what? It's fat. So how's fat going to help So your fat? brain is largely comprised of fat, and so you need the right fats for your brain to function properly and for mood to be uh, stable. Okay. Um, the other thing that it does is it helps the way um, insulin is utilized with the yeah. cells, so, so it helps it, the, the that, that key that Joey, that was, key talking that about, Joey right? was talking about, yes. That key slip, literally, it oils right. the It's, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the a door. lubricant to the key, yeah. There you exactly. go. Asmakula's calling in from Toronto. Let's go to the phone lines. Asmakula, how are you? You with us there? Uh, hello. Hi there. Turn your TV set down if you don't mind if it's on. Oh, okay, no problem. Go ahead with your question. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the program. It's a very nice program. Thank and you. Uh, second, my question uh, from you is uh, that uh, I'm a 35 or uh, 35 year old, year old man and uh, uh, my habit is that I eat usually during the night, and uh, mm -hmm. if I don't eat uh, during the night, then uh, I can't go to sleep. So I want to ask you a question that what is the alternative food that I can eat at the same time not to make me fat, 
I mean, I'm not a fat guy, but not to make me fat, and at least I can go to sleep during the night. Are you having three balanced meals during the day, first of all, Asifullah? Uh, yes, I okay. do. Uh, you know, I, I, I do take a big fast, and in the lunchtime around 2 o'clock. So he might be day. actually considering. Thank you for the question, Asifullah. That's great. So he might be thinking, am I an emotional eater? I'm eating late <laughs> at night. I've had my three balanced meals. What would you say to him? Well, first, he's at a metabolic advantage because he's male. Right. So he's going to lose quicker. He's going to, and it doesn't sound like he has, he wants to lose weight. He wants to fill up. The best way to fill up is he has to have proteins or fat. Have hard-boiled eggs in your fridge. Have two or three ounces of protein, like chicken or fish. Make sure you have good fats. If you have half an avocado with a little bit of salt on it, A, it's delicious, it'll fill you up. Have nuts, 10 to 15 almonds or walnuts. Have a small protein shake. So, you know, we buzz through carbohydrates. We buzz through the wrong type of carbo um, the wrong refined flours and sugars, whereas fats and proteins and fiber it trickles into the bloodstream, so it makes you feel full for a long period of time. And Jamie, just like That's you said in the beginning, before we go to break here, get the stuff out of your home, right? Where and should get the, where, the good stuff in. Where should be shopping in the grocery store, typically? On the outer aisles. The and, outer get, aisles. and stock up your house with healthy foods, and that's yeah. what you're going to eat. Yeah, Asmakula, dump all that refined stuff, the chips, chocolate, cakes, and cookies, unless it's the chocolate that's 70%. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the next break. It's time for our next break. Folks, research has shown that insufficient sleep undermines dietary efforts to reduce fat. That means if you don't sleep well, regardless of your diet, you'll retain more weight than if you slept longer. When we come back, how much sleep is enough? Plus, we'll get to your calls, tweets, and emails. Just call now. Sleep you get has everything to do with your body mass index and percentage of fat, especially if you're not eat, sorry, rather if you are not eating as much as usual. That means less energy intake. That means that a lack of sleep can affect your efforts to lose weight, in essence. We're here with nutrition and weight loss experts Dr. Joey Shulman and Jamie Longwa on this whole topic. First, I want to talk about this idea of more sleep. How much is enough, Jamie? So you're looking, you want to get between seven and eight hours of sleep per night, um, for sure, aim to get that. And when, what's that doing for us, when we are getting that amount? Well, when you are sleeping, you're secreting really important hormones. We know melatonin secreted in complete darkness, and all hormones are intercommunicating. And there's studies that show that people who are even mildly sleep deprived, they have a predisposition to gaining that weight, especially around the abdominal region. Right. And people come in and sometimes that met, the metabolism question, the thing that's missing as far as getting their metabolism to move is sleep. They're just not sleeping properly. Absolutely. And Jamie, we went over a study actually that you pointed out to me just before the show yeah. that, that, that was present, presented exactly this just in a, in a very quick and dirty form. What, what did it show? So it showed a lot of things, but one of the things that it was showing was leptin, which is your feel full hormone, actually decreases with lack of sleep. Even, even over like, it, they, this study was six days and after six days they had already showed that leptin. So you don't sleep decreases. and essentially your brain is being told that you're not yet full, although you've right. actually achieved your calorie right. intake. And you typically crave the wrong foods for energy, so you're going to be craving the sugars because you're tired, right? right? You need to get Just through your day, the caffeine, the caffeine with sugar in it. Interesting. Yeah. All right, guys, we're back to the phone line. Connie's calling in from Niagara. Hi, Connie. Hello, how are you tonight? I'm how are you? Fine, thank you. Good. I love your program. Thank you. Okay, um, I put brown sugar in my coffee and I put honey in my tea. Is that good? Well, let's talk about that, the better sweeteners. That's a great question, Connie, because a lot of confusion around, oh, should it be white sugar, brown sugar, honey, stevia, sucanat, or anything at all? I mean, what's your two cents? Well, you know, I'm a person who says to our clients, you're not here for weight loss because you're putting a little bit of brown sugar in your coffee in the morning. Right. That's not why you have to lose weight. So Correct. is that an okay thing to do? It's an okay thing to do, but it's the amount of sugar that you're having. Is brown sugar a little bit better than white sugar? Yes. It is a little bit better. Stevia, some people are using it, it's a natural herb from Paraguay, and they put it in their coffee. Some people love it. Some people say it has a licorice aftertaste. I'm one of those people who puts brown sugar or a little bit of honey because I don't love stevia. It's okay, yep. but that's not why we have an issues. epidemic of obesity. Point. Very good point. But if someone's going to choose, Jamie, what's your favorite and why? Uh, I like stevia because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't affect blood sugar, um, but there's, I would say probably honey, like a, our maple syrup, it has more more minerals in it. It's really good for our immune system too. Yeah. Some studies show that it actually helps to balance uh, the immune system of some people that, don't, that have allergies. But sugar is sugar, so right. whether it's honey or, or yeah. white sugar, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. You still have to moderate your, your intake. Very good point. Andy's calling in from North York. Hi, Andy. You Hi, um, how are you tonight? Excellent, thanks. How are you? Good, good. Go I 
to ask um, the doctor in, in particular, um, the nutritionist, um, I'm 26 and I've been suffering from a food addiction uh, from weight gain from surgery about several years ago. I've lost 50 pounds and that you know, was through vigorous diet and exercise and, um, and I've kind of lost the motivation to, to, to really keep up and to, to really be in touch with myself and, and really to keep the weight down. I have about 40 more pounds to go to get to my um, I guess my goal weight and I just really want to maintain and be very realistic with my lifestyle and not an unrealistic body type of I guess um, Images for, for, for myself in order to get where I am. I'm just wondering um, how do I get back on track because I've started binge eating again And my trigger is in particular chocolate and I really don't want to kind of go back to that dark place and gain all the weight Well, thank you so much for that. It's a great question. Thank you for opening up a lot of people are thinking what you've just asked So I'll hand it off to you for first there. Dr. Joey. Well, I think that's a very open-hearted honest question She asked and I appreciate her asking it and it gets back to the truth of weight loss and if I can chat about the truth of weight loss number number one is you need to find your triggers and what are your triggers number two is find your why why do you want to lose the weight why did you gain the weight and I know this sounds funny visualize and we're not exactly sure scientifically why visualization works but we know research wise it works and it doesn't even matter if you're skeptical of it research shows it works so where do you want to be and the third thing is go for variety. Excuse me, fourth thing, go for variety. So stock your fridge with yummy new foods like the ones we have here. And the fifth element is lose weight with dignity. Don't do a gimmick. Don't I do a those. shtick. I love those four truths. It's going to hurt you. If you lose, don't lose weight. If you do it in a really crazy, fast, rapid weight loss way, I promise you it won't stay off. And you want to make this a permanent shift. Excellent stuff. And I just actually before to add. Um, I, I love to add, get clients to actually make a list of like 50 to 100 reasons why they want to lose weight um, or, or, or get healthy, right? It's, it's about being healthy, not necessarily weight loss and, and link it to all aspects of their life so they can get clear on why they're trying to lose the weight. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Well, it is time for our final break. Listen, when we come back, I have an exciting little uh, you know, topic I'm going to tell you about as it relates to aging and uh, weight gain, and especially something called sarcopenia. That's more when we come back. Stay tuned. Successful weight loss is the result of having a vision, making a plan, writing it down, and then religiously following that plan until your goals are realized. You know, but this is a lot more difficult for people over the age of 60. And especially, as we mentioned in the top half, it's so important to get enough sleep. They're experiencing advanced phase sleep disorder. They can't get enough sleep. They're also experiencing something I mentioned to break there called sarcopenia. Explain that for me, Jamie. What is it? So sarcopenia is just is basically muscle loss. And, it, and it's a result of aging if you're not doing something to maintain muscle. And muscle is really important for weight loss because muscle, one pound of muscle burns for 35 calories. Yep. One pound of fat burns three. So the wow. more muscle you can burn, the more metabolically active you're going to be. And I think you're doing the Joy of Aging seminar, which is what I did last That's year. That's right. Actually, that relates here because, you know, people, you know, the, the elderly, they want to understand, you know, how to better keep themselves, but also how we can age more gracefully. You yes. did it last year, didn't you? We did the keynote last year. We had such a great time. You're going to, it's, it's such a fantastic function to raise funds for. York Central Hospital. Uh, yeah, York Central's a great cause, you know, yes. as, as often as we can support the hospitals. I'm doing a topic called Aging and the Fountain of Truth. For any of you guys that are interested out there, it is Sunday, October the 17th, this year, 9.31 at Eagle's Nest. And as uh, Joey mentioned here, all proceeds go to the, North, or to the uh, York, York Central, Central Hospital. Yeah. You can learn more at www.joyofaging.com. And listen, here's where it's really fun. If you don't even want to come out to donate $100 and it's a full tax write-off, will get you uh, an entry into winning a $225 uh, gift bag with lots of great little goodies. Fantastic. So even if you can't come out, please go to thejoyofaging.com, .ca rather, thejoyofaging.ca, and, and make a, a donation. We'd really appreciate it. On to the phone line, Sandy is calling from Toronto. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Bryce. How are you today? I'm excellent. How are you? Okay, great. Um, I, have a I have a question that um, I was wondering. I have a fatty liver. Yes. And it, 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 it was... It was caused really by tetracycline with a lot of acne yeah and is there anything in my diet that can help that or not help it a lot of people experience fatty liver non-alcoholic fatty liver syndrome often it's from being overweight sometimes it's from antibiotic associated you know uh, you know liver toxicities detoxification probably one of the best ways you know to that's my two cents and that also helps you achieve better weight right? better weight I mean I am I'm I love juicing and take the time juicing because it's the best way you can get the compaction of antioxidants nutrients vitamins to detox especially liver the other thing you can do is milk thistles very effective Absolutely. 
heavy duty probiotics because digestion will spill over into liver, uh, liver as well. Um, cleansing as much as much hydration as you can get in your system as possible. Vitamin E, the latest studies show, and SAM E for non-alcoholic fatty liver syndrome. Do you have any favorite detox protocols, Jamie, that uh, Sandy might benefit from? Um, it definitely, I think it's something you should talk to your healthcare practitioner about, but just starting by eating a super clean diet. So it's, first of all, start your day with lemon juice and warm water, nice gentle liver cleanse. Yes. Yep. Um, and then just eat very simple like meals, one to two ingredients, lean proteins, lots of vegetables. Vegetables have phytonutrients in it that help us detoxify. Yeah, and Detoxification. Especially green vegetables. Absolutely. Very Kale. good points, both of you. Detoxification is not anything that, you know, requires a supplement. We do it inherently on our own. Yes. We can improve it by these dietary measures. Sandy, one last little bit of advice. It's all about what you avoid as well. So stop perhaps too much coffee. Certainly don't drink alcohol. Avoid over-the-counter medications if you can. Uh, and just be friendly uh, with your liver. Uh, we're on to uh, another call here from Conlin. Conlin's calling from Toronto as well. How are you? Hi, Conlin. Hi. Go ahead with your question. Hi, so um, I wanted to ask a question. Go ahead, turn your TV down too, if you don't mind, because uh, you're, you're going to get some interruption. Oh, about. okay, okay, sorry. Thanks. Um, so recently I bought, um, I ended up pills, uh -huh. and I read it would help in weight loss. Yeah. But on the bottle it says it's a digestive aid, so I want to know if and how digestive aids help promote in weight loss and or weight maintenance. I like the question, and I also like that you're reading the label carefully. Is there a correlation here, or maybe is this label padding, some false claiming? Well, there is a correlation in the sense that there's a triad for weight loss that we focus on, and that is quality calories, optimal digestion, and hormonal balance. So you're only as healthy as your pipe. So if you're not absorbing digesting properly, you will be bloating. It will show up on the scale. People who aren't going to the bathroom properly every day, they can be two to three pounds up. So in that sense, yes, there is a definite link. Excellent. Well, that's a great question. On to Dave from Brampton. We have time. We can get one more in, I think, here, Dave. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, fine. Thanks. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, quick question. I'm wondering, what's better, whey protein or soy protein? Because I heard that whey protein is inflammatory, so I'm not sure if it's true. I like it. Jamie, your two cents on uh, whey protein. Um, I think a good quality whey protein isolate, um, New Zealand is a great option, um, but there's also less inflammatory ones if you are someone with an inflammatory condition like brown rice protein and hemp that I like a little better than soy. So it's a little processed um, in, the, in the way that they produce it. So. Hey listen, it, it really doesn't matter about the quality of a food, even a supplement. If your body's immunological, you know, your immune system is set up to not like that substance, it could be broccoli for that matter, yes. mm -hmm. it could also maybe contribute to weight gain. It's certainly not good for you. So whey, soy, depends on how you respond to it, right? Exactly. There's a fabulous book, Are My Food Sensitivities Making Me Fat? Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it may not be the nicest title, but people who are sensitive to foods and they continually eat them, they don't lose weight. We've seen it time and time again. Excellent stuff. Last thoughts before we go out. Um, Motivational or otherwise. I just think, be clear on why you want to lose weight. Like, really get a clear definition. Why do I want to achieve my health goals? And the clearer you can become, the, the easier it's going to be. And stock up your house with healthy foods. Healthy like foods. These. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie, right. Joey, thank you so thank much. You. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. My final recommendations. Well, the natural healthcare industry is riddled with promises of, quote unquote, the next best thing in weight loss. And many of you out there may be just like Tony here middle-aged, overweight, and struggling to feel better and drop some pounds. My message today is not to get caught up in the hype of the latest powder, elixir, or short-term supplement fix. There's no better time than right now to consult with a professional nutritionist or dietitian who can help you understand your cravings and behaviors when it comes to foods. Supplements can help, but they aren't the most important part when it comes to losing weight. We all know, without a doubt, that successful weight loss and keeping it off involves only, not only a good diet, rather, and regular exercise, but also reducing stress, balancing hormones, and getting at least seven to eight hours of restful sleep every night. Well, if I had a choice, I would tell you my top three favorite weight loss supplements. You know, here they are. They would still be a good B-complex, CLA, or conjugated linoleic acid, and chromium. For more on today's show or to watch previous episodes of Wild on Health and to review today's or my previous recommendations, go to cp24.com and click on the Wild on Health logo and the Watch Now button. For now, thanks so much for watching and be well.